Well, in the past few episodes, uh, we have been talking about the, uh, the, the Antietam campaign that took place in the Civil War in 1862. Whenever you look up Antietam, uh, a lot of information will say that the Battle of Antietam was fought on September 17th. Well, people only think that the battle was fought on the 17th of September. There's an argument to be made that the battle actually starts on the evening of the 16th of September because there were bullets that were flying in the Antietam area uh, on the evening of the 16th. So we're standing over the Antietam Creek right now and we are going to be taking a look at where some of the first shots of what would become the bloodiest day in American history took place. What we are looking at right here is Antietam Creek and uh, it's been raining a little bit so it's it's kind of full right now and uh, on Antietam Creek people may or may not know that there were three different bridges in this general vicinity that spanned the creek there was an upper a middle and a lower bridge now most people are familiar with the lower bridge which is now called Burnside Bridge we'll be getting to that in a later episode this right here is the upper bridge uh, sometimes it's called hit bridge uh, other times i've heard it referred to as the hooker bridge uh, it was built in 1830 and uh, as you can see is still open to vehicular traffic today i said 1830 i think the 1830s i don't know the exact date but really quite amazing that that this bridge is still operational and uh, after the battle of south mountain Robert E. Lee would have been consolidating the Army of Northern Virginia just to the west of, I'm sorry, to the east of Sharpsburg. And uh, McClellan and the Army of the Potomac would have been advancing in this direction from the east. So they would have been moving west. And on the, the right wing would have been General Joseph Hooker, uh, commander of the First Corps. And he and the First Corps would have crossed over the Antietam Creek right over this very bridge on September 16th. And uh, it was over this bridge and along this path to the west that was going to lead them to the Antietam battlefield. Now, as Hooker and the, the northern wing of the Army of the Potomac were, were crossing over this bridge, they may or may not have known what was at stake uh, for each side, or at least the, the common soldier may have not known the, the big things that were at stake. For the Army of Northern Virginia, one of the big things that they were looking for in invading up here, in addition to drawing uh, you know, the Union Army out of Northern Virginia, uh, is they were looking for uh, official diplomatic recognition from the British government. Uh, the, the British were, were starting to get a little bit short uh, on, on cotton, uh, which is, of course, the, the South's primary export during this period of time. And, and the, Britain was kind of wavering on whether or not they were going to formally recognize the Confederate States of America. If they could get a win on northern soil, that was definitely going to help them out. For the Army of the Potomac, they had just had a string of losses. They, they needed a win in this area bad. But in addition to that, uh, Lincoln had an emancipation proclamation that was pretty much drafted and ready to go. But he needed a win in order to have uh, kind of the, uh, the right circumstances to issue it so, he didn't, uh, so it didn't look desperate uh, whenever he was doing it. Uh, this was something that, uh, of course, was morally right, uh, but was also a big war aim uh, and a war measure that was going to free the slaves in the southern states and uh, deprive the Confederacy of this workforce. So anyway, the guys who were crossing this bridge had a, a big task ahead of them. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue moving west uh, along this road.
Okay, well, we've moved a little further west now along Keedy's Town Road. Uh, that, that was the name of the, the road in 1862 as well. So, so the bridge that we crossed was a few miles down that way. And uh, what Hooker was wanting his first corps to do was to come down this road and move out to the west here and get all the way to a main road called the Hagerstown Pike. Well, there was a, uh, a regiment of Pennsylvania cavalry that took a turn right here on the Smoketown Road. And uh, they didn't make it very far down here until they ran into the 9th Virginia Cavalry and started having uh, a little bit of a shootout. And the, the further to the south they moved, the more intense the, uh, the slinging of lead became. And uh, they ended up calling for some infantry support. Uh, so coming in support of them were going to be some of the Pennsylvania Reserves. So the, the lead element under Seymour's brigade that is making their way south uh, towards Sharpsburg, kind of seeing what is, is out there, uh, was the 13th Pennsylvania Reserves. Uh, they were also called the, the Bucktails. Uh, so the, the reason they got the name Bucktails is uh, that they had to kind of like prove their, their woodsmanship and prowess by going out and killing a buck and then they would wear the tail uh, on their hat. But anyway, it's the 13th Pennsylvania Reserves who were the, the lead element moving south. So shout out to my friend Eric from Addressing Gettysburg. He's a big fan of the Pennsylvania Reserves. And uh, they are led by a guy named Hugh McNeil. Well, as they are moving south, there is uh, an exchange of fire and Hugh McNeil ends up getting hit and he falls forward and he says, forward bucktails, forward. And, and he is going to be killed. And these guys are mad because they, they really, really like McNeil. So as they are moving south, uh, these guys are, are looking for blood and they're gonna be backed up by, by the 5th and the uh, 6th Pennsylvania Reserves uh, because they, they can see that there's more down here than what they expected. And as they move into the patch of woods that becomes known as the East Woods, uh, it, it's really kind of cool. Uh, one guy says something to the effect of like, boys, we are in our element now. So these are woodsmen, these are hunters, and now they're in the woods and uh, they, they feel like they are in their territory. Okay, we're gonna move a little bit further south now. We've moved further south along the Smoketown Road. And anytime I'm out doing these types of things, I, I like to look at these battles from the perspectives of everyone involved. So where we are standing right now is what would have been right along here, the skirmish line that was formed by uh, two brigades under the divisional command of John Bell Hood. Uh, so again, this is the Smoketown Road. We're, we're facing north, um, kind of like the, the Dunker Church and, and Sharpsburg is, is behind us still to the south. And along Hood's line here, uh, let me just let me just walk over here. Back off in in this direction, you would have had William Wolford's brigade, and then all along through here would have been the brigade of Evander Law, and they had been sent up to right here. This is the East Woods to check the advance of the uh, the Union Army and these Pennsylvania guys as they were coming to the south. And uh, General Hood later recalled that along this skirmish line, whenever the Pennsylvania Reserve guys got close to them, uh, he said, we opened fire and a spirited action ensued. And that was really going to be what kicks off the Battle of Antietam. As the afternoon wore on, the, the action here in the East Woods was kind of continuing to pick up steam. Both sides uh, were sustaining some casualties. They even kind of brought artillery to bear to a, a small degree uh, here in, in this area. 
Uh, but as it reached, you know, darkness, both sides ended up kind of just melting away. So the, the Union soldiers went back to the north. Uh, Hood and, and his men ended up kind of moving back to the south, went to the other side of the Dunker Church. And throughout the night, there was, you know, like small exchanges of gunfire. And, and you could hear the, the cries of, of the wounded out in the field. There was one in particular of a guy crying out to the other side, begging somebody to come out to him so that he could get a message uh, to his wife. So, September 16th was going to witness the, the first exchange of gunfire and the first action here in the area of Sharpsburg and Antietam Creek. But it was going to be early the next morning when the real bloodletting was going to begin right here in Miller's Cornfield. <laughs> 